I love it when she calls me that. Hey, uh, that is really inspirational. The uh, you make me wanna you make me wanna travel the globe and fight bigotry now. You know that's that's and those are the talks that are the best that kind of light a fire and make you just want to do something differently. Hey, you remember after high school we all went to Cancun for the senior trip? I think we should organize in the creative community some kind of massive trip where we all go together somewhere and, and we we fight bigotry together. You want to do that? All right, we're gonna do that. Phoenix. <laughs> I was thinking uh, a little more global, but we can start. We can start small. Our next speaker is a Texas native who has a passion for people and nonprofits. Uh, she's been across the globe fighting bigotry from Seattle to South Africa. She's worked on both sides of the table in nonprofits, working as a liaison between a Dallas-based family foundation and grant-seeking organizations. Most recently, she's the executive search consultant for a nonprofit. Clap your hands, stomp your feet for Jennifer Sherry. Thanks, Winston. So tonight I want to talk about nonprofit evaluation. And I can already see a couple of you thinking that this isn't going to be interesting for you. But I'm going to ask you to hang in there for just a couple minutes because before we get to the heavy stuff, I'm going to talk about my other passion, beekeeping. <laughs> So my husband and I started keeping bees last year. This is a picture of our hive when it's about one month old, and actually just a couple weeks ago. So which hive do you think is stronger? We certainly thought that the 2016 hive was. That sucker has over 70 pounds of honey on it, and we weren't even to the main honey flow yet. But when we opened it up, it turned out that that hive was actually queenless. So our population was shrinking, and it was really just a couple weeks away from crashing without any kind of intervention whereas our 2015 hive was growing really fast and we're doing a great job of recruiting resources. So this is just my way of demonstrating the importance of evaluation. Organizations are incredibly complex and sometimes it's hard to tell if something has gone wrong if you're just looking at the surface level. You really need to dig in a little deeper. So evaluation is important, but I always get the question, what is it? Technically, it's defined as assigning value to a program based on predetermined metrics, but that's really just a really boring way of saying, are you meeting your goals? Getting started can be really intimidating. If you Google evaluation, you're going to end up with all these really technical terms, um, qualitative and quantitative data, formative, process, summative, meta-analysis. So I'm going to try and give you just a couple things to wrap your head around and try and make evaluation a little bit more stomachable. Well, so before you even get to starting an evaluation, I want you to keep two things in mind. The first is resources. I could spend time every day in my hive. I think my bees are fascinating. But the fact is, every time I open up that box, I set the bees back two full days. So I have to balance my need to know what's going on in that hive with their need to be left alone and do their work. And organizational evaluation is no different. Anytime you do an evaluation, you're transferring resources from one part of your organization towards that evaluation. So you need to be committed to undertaking an evaluation that you can do within your existing resource framework. Um, and that sometimes means keeping things simple. I once worked with a nonprofit that had statistics saying they were needed in the community, but they didn't know if the way they were doing their program was meeting client needs. And they couldn't handle survey data. They just didn't have the infrastructure. So we worked with them, and what ended up being a sustainable evaluation for them was simply asking their clients to put up a green, yellow, or red smiley face after they received services to indicate if their needs were met. And this sounds kind of silly, right? But the clients were happy because they were able to give the nonprofit feedback, and the employees had a great, easy-to-understand visual. They could walk in the door and tell if they were doing well. If things started turning yellow, well, they knew they needed to do some more evaluation to tell if what had gone wrong. The second thing I want you to keep in mind is use. If I get in my hive and I see a lot of hive beetles and I don't respond to that information by installing beetle traps, that population is going to get out of control and they'll damage the hive and set it back. The same is true in your organization. You've already invested these resources. You've already spent those resources on that evaluation. If you don't use it, then you're missing a chance to strengthen your organization and grow it. So those are my two big tips to keep in mind. Make sure that you select an evaluation that you can do well within your existing resource framework and make sure you're committed to using the results. Now the next step is really getting started. So what do you do? We're all comfortable with goal setting, right? We do this every day. So we're all really comfortable with it. What I'm gonna suggest is you start by identifying your long-term goal, whether that's to decrease the obesity rate in Dallas County or sell 10 million pieces of product. List out that long-term goal and work backwards to set yourself measurable, attainable, short and medium term goals. And from there, you just simply use evaluation to tell if you're moving toward or away from those milestones. So pretty simple idea, right? If I want to get 100 pounds of honey off of my hive, my bees have to make 10 pounds first. So I have to make sure that we manage the pests, 
that we have a healthy queen who's laying eggs, and that they have plenty of sources of nectar and pollen. Now, specifically for you nonprofits and audience, this is your action point. Go home today and Google logic model. Don't get intimidated by the picture on the screen. This is just something I pulled up of Google so you know what you're looking for. But this tool was specifically developed for nonprofits, and it's a great way to create a roadmap for your organization. I always like to start by listing out a mission statement. From there, you make sure everything connects back to that mission statement. You're going to list your resources, the ones you have and that you need, the programs you'd like to offer, the people you'd like to offer those programs to, and then your outcomes, again, short, medium, and long term, so you can then identify what to measure in your evaluation. The great thing about this tool is when you're done with it, if you've done it well, not only do you have a fantastic roadmap for you, but you can take it to a donor and say, I need a $10,000 grant to offer this program to these people. I expect to have these outcomes. Bonus for you, I've already identified the valuation I'm going to do to make sure that I'm using your dollars effectively. So this is how you get started with evaluation in a nutshell. Be sure that you select one that you can do within your existing resource framework. Make sure you plan to use the results. And if you do it right, the outcome can be sweet.